Hi, Moglets. Today we're gonna raise Nilu after the worst summon session of my entire life. I'm so defeated. <laughs> my soul has left my body. Nilu, let's just, oh God, I forgot I needed so many books. I didn't farm enough books. I farmed everything else, but the but the most basic of necessities and and Mora. I think we're gonna. I think th I think we're screwed on Mora also. Man, I thought this would finally be a raising mode where we don't have to spend half of it farming. Level fifty, but we should have all this stuff we need at least for seventy. I basically prepared all the way to eighty, except a couple of those flowers also. But yeah, with. The amount of books we have, there's no way. There's level 60. Yeah, we can't even get her to 70, dude. I don't even have a condensed. Well, let's just get this then. Then we're gonna go make some condensed. I don't have primo gems anymore. I have two primo gems. Yeah, I think it definitely was the worst summon session. I don't remember ever having to pity five times to get C0 R1. I don't think that's ever happened to me. Oh, yeah, these are the guys I was talking about. I think I need their drops for Candace or something. So I figure if I have to spam ley lines, it might it may as well do it in Sumeru so that I can at least kind of get some drops also. That dude just ragdolled. We're probably just gonna raise her as much as we can after every, every condensed. We might already have enough. Zero to 70 is child's play. 85 plus where it really starts to hurt. 70. She is officially raised. Probably not sacrificial, right? Because she it seems like she kind of resets her skill on her own anyway. Usually for raising modes, I want to give them a four star to start. Favonius is always generally decent. Oh, well, dang, I do have... I can R5 it. She needs Elements Mastery and HP. This is also good for um, Kazuha. So it wouldn't really be a waste to raise it, honestly. But I, I don't know if I want to raise it for... Because I also have to raise this one decently quick let me get it to r5 just to see what it does such a weird tiny multiplier 0 0.072 i don't even know what to do with that for every 10 elements mastery they get 0.7 for every 100 they get 7 so they'll have like 21 percent at 300 elements mastery oh well actually yeah i mean for kazuha yeah now that i think about it because kazuha has like a thousand so that'll give him 70 percent i was trying to be realistic because like who the, who the hell has a thousand elements of mastery? Well, Kazuha does. It buffs the team's energy recharge, which is okay, I guess. So it's whatever. Uh, definitely good for Kazuha, I would say. Nilu needs apparently HP and elements of mastery. Uh, it does have elements of mastery. Are there even any HP swords? Ah, three star though. I don't know if I'd want to go for a three star. Yeah, then probably either this new weapon, um, Iron Sting might be okay. I don't know. I mean, it gives Elements of Mastery at least. Yeah, we'll probably use Iron Sting for the raised showcase, but if you are actually free to play and you got some of these weapons also, it probably is a little better at least. Uh, it might potentially be easier to refine as well because this is a forged one and you have to get lucky enough to get the drops. Iron Sting is okay too. It's currently on Kazuha. Whatever. Iron Sting it is, for now at least. Build. I haven't even thought about it really, but HP and Elements of Mastery would just be the two-piece, two-piece again, I guess, like we did for a recent character. Too many new characters. They also reduce the time of the update cycle, so it's like we're we got three characters and then yeah, it's just all coming so fast and it's kind of hard to keep up. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about main stats yet. Does she have a lot of base HP? Oh yeah, she has a good amount of base HP. 11.6k at 70? Okay. <laughs> Essentially going for as much HP as possible. So I would think like triple HP with element of mastery substats as much as possible maybe. So let's just see what we can do with what we have. I don't want to bother like trying to fully max HP, like HP percent plus big flats. So it's just bloom damage. That's her whole role. Bloom damage. I only have two HP goblets and then we have to go off. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to raise artifacts for her honestly. Man, I don't know. We might just have to go broken set on her, honestly. Maybe we can do two-piece tenacity, but most of my equipment is just full crits. <laughs> All right, we're gonna at least try and get two-piece tenacity, I guess, and then maybe broken set for the rest. Yeah, this one on Candace isn't bad, I guess. Zhongli's, I guess, is slightly better. That's not gonna be the best build I've ever built. <laughs> Damn, what? <laughs> she has almost 40,000 HP with this garbage on and an iron sting a level 80 iron sting she has almost 40,000 hp that's crazy um at level 72 that'll be her build for the raising it's obviously not that great but you know um 
whatever. I'll need to probably raise some new artifacts and get her weapon up, obviously, to make her actually impressive. So we're back, ready to finish up Nilu. We do have to raise her talents first. I'm probably gonna leave basic alone for now, though I might raise it later. Her elemental skill here is probably gonna be the most important to actually get levels on. We will do some for her burst as well, but there's her skill at level six anyway. Raising her burst essentially only increases the damage it does, and I've heard it doesn't do a ton of damage, but considering her insane base HP, I can imagine once we actually raise her and, you know, get her in a good set and such, it could actually do a decent amount. It's already at 25 and 31% max HP respectively, which is pretty high. These are the only two skills we're going to raise for now because they actually scale off of HP unlike her basic. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the talent and constellation overview. Her basic is pretty standard for a sword user, nothing to really say there. Again, it doesn't scale off of HP, which is a little unfortunate. Her charge attack is a fancy little spinning move. I really like the animation of it, though can't imagine I'll be using it too often. Her elemental skill, I would say, is the core of her kit. There's a couple things I want to test here, but essentially, once you do her elemental skill, you have two paths you can go down. If you just do three basic attacks, you'll enter a state where her normal attacks become hydro and she's slinging these water arcs everywhere what i assume is that it takes the multipliers of her elemental skill rather than her basic attack but she is doing basic attacks so i don't really know however i assume most people are going to generally go down the second route whereas you're pressing the elemental skill instead of the normal attack button and on the third strike nilu will produce a hydro ring that applies wet to enemies nearby which can of course make for some good reactions bloom in particular her burst is essentially a big aoe attack after the initial hit of this 25.8% max HP, they'll be hit again a little while later for 31.5% of her max HP. Her first passive is really interesting here, and I think what kind of forces her into a Bloom DPS. Basically, for this passive to work, you need to have a full team of Dendros and Hydros, and at least one of each. So you can have three Dendros and one Hydro, three Hydros, one Dendro, whatever. As long as the full party is Dendro and Hydro and you have one of each, it works. Completing Nilu's elemental skill gives you the Golden Chalice buff for 30 seconds. So since she has a much shorter cooldown on her elemental skill, it's basically a permanent buff. And anytime anyone is hit by a Dendro attack, which will again be very easy as this is a Bloom team and Bloom can hurt you a little bit, so you're technically getting hit by Dendro attacks very often. So in a nutshell, it's basically a permanent team-wide 100 elemental mastery buff. In addition, the Dendro cores produced by Bloom will be upgraded to bountiful cores. They'll explode faster and have bigger AoEs. Hyper Bloom is unfortunately impossible on this team. They just won't react with Electro, or Pyro for that matter. And her final passive here really begs you to build her with as much HP as possible. Every thousand HP above 30,000 will increase these bountiful cores damage by 9%, up to 400% extra damage. That's pretty crazy. Granted, you would need some really good gear to get that 400%. Yeah, she would need around 75,000 HP which I'm not sure is too far off because at level 70 we have 42,000 and we don't even have her signature weapon equipped yet. Her C1 gives her elemental skill a pretty significant boost, either a 65% damage increase if you choose to go the basic attack route, or a 6 second duration increase if you choose to go the Hydro Aura route. Both very significant buffs. The C2 sounds actually insane as well. In the correct Nilu team of only Hydros and Dendros, just by doing Hydro damage to an opponent, they'll have their Hydro resistance decreased by 35%, and triggering any Bloomery action will decrease their dendro resistance by 35%. Both of those things you'll be doing very regularly in this team, so that's a lot of resistance shred. Her C4 on the other hand doesn't sound as impressive as the first two. Her elemental skill will produce 15 extra energy, which actually is pretty substantial, and her burst damage will be increased by 50%. This I assume will apply to the initial hit as well as the secondary hit on her burst. Her C6 is kind of refreshingly simple. It's just a stat bump. 30% crit rate and 60% crit damage, which is actually very substantial considering you want to, you know, feed as much HP as possible into her, so you're not going to have a ton of room for crits. So that would do a lot for her own damage. Granted, Blooms can crit. If they can't crit, and that's like going to be her main source of damage, I don't know how good this is going to be actually. And if my math is right, you only need 50,000 HP to fully take advantage of this, so easily reasonable for any C6 Nilus out there. I can imagine maybe C6 is where you start to maybe main DPS with her, I don't know, with her basic, basic, basic elemental skill. But yeah, after 300 and something pulls for a C0 R1, um, <laughs> I don't have to worry about even thinking about that for a while. She seems like a pretty niche character, all in all, which I think is perfectly okay. 
Uh, she is kind of forced into a specific team if you want to take full advantage of her, which is, yes, Dindro and Hydro only. Focusing on uh, Bloom reactions, or I guess in her case, Bountiful Core explosions. I'd think having two of each, two Hydros and two Dindros would be best for resonance purposes also. I haven't fully decided on the team yet, though I can imagine if they haven't patched Barbara's infinite Dindro Core thing yet, she'd be pretty good as well. Potentially, she's meant to be like that, and it's not a bug or an exploit or anything. If that's the case, then yeah, Barbara would be pretty nice here. You could could go triple hydro which I'm somewhat considering you can't take full advantage of dendro resonance anyway because this 20 elements master you only get from reactions you cannot do first things first of course I am quite curious about the question I had earlier and that is if raising her basic attack will increase the damage of her follow-up attacks after uh, doing triple basic after E which I know sounds a little complicated, but it's pretty simple once you see it, I guess. For that, we're just gonna head to Masanori and get some baseline damage numbers. This will be a pretty simple test. So when it doesn't crit, we are getting a pretty consistent 2,039 on the last strike there. So I think, so we'll level it up once. Obviously, if I ever see a 2,039 non-crit on the last one again, it doesn't do anything. 2039. Okay, so there you have it. So another character where raising their basics is essentially a waste of materials. One other question I guess I do kind of want to answer for myself is, can these blooms crit? It's hard to see amongst everything else, honestly. That was a 14k bloom though. Still doing 8,000, but you can see how much more the other one does. 16. I don't... I, I'm not sure if they can crit, but no one in my party really has a lot of crits, so... <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to watch as closely as possible to the actual bloom explosions, but I don't believe I've seen a crit yet. So I feel like after watching about 30 blooms exploding, I would have seen at least one crit. That being said, the bountiful cores, the upgraded bloom core things, are doing pretty significant damage, like 15k each. It's definitely not bad. Uh, I don't feel like Barbara's ring is producing as much as she used to. Bloom teams are pretty interesting in general, though, I gotta say. I don't think they're going to be massively viable everywhere, because you are basically just working with two elements. In one of the new domains, it was kind of going crazy. May have been the artifact domain. Let's give that a try. Getting that stuff, and then we'll do go ahead and... If we can. Um... Oh yeah, no. I think they're popping up just as fast as before. We, we, I'm just kind of standing here doing nothing, but all the blooms have killed them all almost. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I think it just works better in AOE situations, which I mean makes sense, of course. I mean, for every extra enemy, it multiplies the amount of reactions you can do, I guess. Actually, it looks like a pretty decent goblet, maybe. Crit rate, element of mastery, though I guess blooms still don't crit. We also will need these things for the weapon coming up, so let's try this domain. Yeah, I'm not sure how well it's going to work here when the enemies are all spread out and stuff, but let's see if we can get through it at least. And they're just not even doing anything. They're just waiting for me to come and kill them. Like, literally. What are, what are you guys doing over there? Yeah, okay. I guess in this case, there's no way this team would ever be good in this domain, for example. But yeah, that was not a pleasant domain run. <laughs> I'm gonna do those later. I guess the other issue is these are four supports in my team. Dindro and Hydro are kind of notoriously support focused. We will go ahead and try a three Hydro team with Yalan and Kokomi and Traveler as our Dindro applicator. Perhaps once Nahida drops, um, she'll be a good partner here as well, but I honestly don't really know much about her yet. I imagine this team, especially with Yalan there, will be a lot better for single targets, so I guess let's try Masanori again. So the first order of business is, of course, Yalan Burst. Um, didn't necessarily need to do Nilu's Burst, but whatever. Then we have Traveler Burst, and finally ending it with Kokomi to basic attack here. Uh, getting a lot of blooms off there, as you can see. A uh, decent amount of blooms anyway. They are doing less than they were before. Around 10,000 instead of the 16,000 they were doing in the old team. Uh, there are also less of them. We might have overall more damage because when we have Yolan's burst, she is doing a lot. But probably the main thing holding her back is the fact she's not really raised that well yet. Considering you do have to build your team around Nilu instead of her being placed in a team where she could help someone. I don't think I'll be able to see nearly her full potential until she is uh, raised, built properly, and with her signature weapon. I'll be trying to get around to that as soon as possible. In the meantime, though, make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below. Overall, I do think she is a very interesting character, though 
quite niche. You do need to do things quite specifically. There's not a ton of flexibility in how you build your team around her. Unless, of course, you're just going to ignore one of her biggest traits, those advanced dendro cores, which again, until she does have, you know, 60, 70,000 HP, they're not going to do nearly as much as they could. So that's the thing. Dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed the video is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching. And until next time.